What I'm going to discuss with you today is probably one of the most important films I have ever made. Now, on the surface, it's going to be a film about UFOs. Personally, I'm not a big fan of UFO films. There's a lot of sensationalism and pseudoscience associated with aliens visiting our planet. The story today is different. Over the last few months, there has been a number of key reports, sightings, and leaks, all related to, let's call it, unexplained aerial phenomenon. The US Navy is preparing new guidelines for pilots on how to report sightings of UFOs. Since 2014, there have been an increasing number of encounters. Most of them are suspected drones. Among the incidents closely studied was an aerial incursion involving the USS Nimitz aircraft carrier strike group, which lasted several days and involved what pilots described as aircraft that flew in a manner that defied physics. The footage you are now watching is the US Navy FLIR film. This is the first video ever released by the US government that shows military planes engaging a UFO. The US Navy admitted that in the Nimitz incident, they tracked various unexplained aerial craft at moving at high speed. The film reveals no control surfaces, no exhaust plume, a uniform heat signature, and no visible means of propulsion. And then, surprisingly, the US Navy released this. We in the media know this as the Tic Tac incident. Personally, I think they really saw something. These are trained pilots and they tracked an object that was moving in unusual ways and unusual speeds. The next thing that happened is that the US military admitted that they were still interested in unexplained aerial phenomenon and had a department that was looking into it. This was a big Response revelation. Requests for information from congressional members and staff of briefings by senior naval intelligence officials as well as ABC. This week. U.S. Senators were briefed on what was called the Propulsion Gap. Seemingly unrelated incidents, but today I think they're all connected and we're about to learn some new facts about advanced propulsion craft because of the pressure put on the US from the other side who also have this technology. This is a big statement. By the time you watch this film, I will not be surprised 
if in the mainstream media you start seeing more and more leaks and then eventually a big statement will be made about the technology which the US currently have from an undisclosed very reputable source I have received an email that ties all these stories together. The Tic Tac, the Unexplained Aerial Phenomenon Research, the Senator's Briefing on the Propulsion Gap are all connected. And in fact, they are all the same story. Today, I am going to try my hardest to explain the background to this, show you how they all interconnect, and deep dive into the technology to try and understand what we now have and its capabilities. It was first applied for on April 28, 2016. The hybrid aerospace underwater craft is described as being capable of incredible feats of speed and maneuverability and can fly equally well in air, water or in space without leaving a heat signature. This is possible claims the patent because the craft is able to engineer the fabric of our reality at the most fundamental level by exploiting the laws of physics. It's complicated stuff, but it's not extraterrestrial. Well, the theory has been around for a long time there's some big questions for me as somebody who is interested in science about the power source to make these aerial vehicles really work. To move a craft through air, space, and underwater by distorting the literal space-time reality around it is only a theory, I think people have cracked it. And today, let's look at how this could possibly work and whether what I'm saying is true. The concept is fairly simple, although the engineering required to make it work is anything but. All matter contains energy on the quantum level. By theoretically creating its own incredibly dense and polarizing energy field, the hybrid craft is claimed to be able to create its own quantum vacuum, which allows itself to repel any air or water molecules with which it interacts. Throughout the patents and publications describing the hybrid aerospace underwater craft, or HAUC, the radical feats of speed and maneuverability of which the craft is supposedly capable can be achieved by coupling high frequency axial spin, or accelerated vibration, with high frequency vibrations of electrically charged systems. In other words, if you can create a room temperature superconductor capable of storing an incredibly high amount of energy and get that energy field created by that superconductor moving at an incredibly high speed around the craft, you could create a polarized energy vacuum around it, which allows it to basically ignore the energy of the air or water, thereby removing its own inertia and mass from the equation. 
The pattern describes the hybrid aerospace underwater craft as roughly triangular shaped. Interestingly, the descriptions of the craft in the pattern include room for a crew compartment shielded by a Faraday cage. Shortly after the hybrid craft patent, another paper was submitted, this time called Room Temperature Superconducting System for Use on a Hybrid Aerospace Undersea Craft. In this patent, it says the achievement of room temperature superconductivity, or RTSC, represents a highly disruptive technology and adds that its military and commercial value is considerable. Controlling gravity has been something that science has wanted to do for a long time. But what exactly is gravity? The best explanation comes from Einstein. If you imagine space and time stretched out like a rubber sheet, and then an object with tremendous mass, which is both weight and size, is placed in the middle of the sheet, you can clearly see how it bends the shape of the sheet. This indentation or distortion then easily explains how planets orbit a star. But is gravity a force like electromagnetism? This question was recently answered with the detection of gravity waves, opening the door to a possibility that the force of gravity could be manipulated. The principle behind this is not new. This is an extract from a paper dated September 1962 called Guidelines to Anti-Gravity. Einstein's general theory of relativity provides a number of ways to generate non-Newtonian gravitational forces. All of these forces could be used to counteract the gravitational field of the Earth, thus acting as a form of anti-gravity. Gravitational properties of matter in studying analogies between electromagnetism and gravitation, it can be seen that one analogous quality has not been investigated. This is the gravitational equivalent to the magnetic permeability. Dense materials. It has been emphasized that in order to achieve measurable gravitational effects with moderate amounts of mass, dense matter is required. The Patent Office rejected the Navy's application. After it was rejected, the Navy's patent attorney appealed the decision and submitted further documentation to ensure that the Patent Office that this craft is indeed enabled. He went on to say, the Navy has already begun a series of experiments to design and demonstrate advanced high energy, high power propulsion systems as described in this patent. One of these patents depict a curiously and distinctly shaped gravitational wave generator that resembles the tic-tac shaped object. The striking similarity between the tic shaped object and the patent application is intriguing but is still a mystery. Clearly this narrative is being closely controlled by the Navy. I believe that in the coming few weeks 
we are going to have to see a revelation. I think they're up against the wall with foreign powers, China, Russia potentially. I personally believe that the US Navy need to drip feed this information to people like me who make films for you because they're about to tell us the truth. And as we know, the truth is out there. <laughs>